This is Center Stage, putting your firm in the spotlight by highlighting business owners and other industry experts to help take your firm to the next level. Hey everyone, and welcome to Center Stage. I'm your host, John Henson, and this week, uh, talking again about mental health and how we can actually heal our brains, kind of, you know, maybe in a similar way we heal uh, another injured part of our body. I don't know. We'll get into that uh, and kind of talk about that. But this week, I'm talking to someone who has actually done that to his brain and healed it. Uh, and he's here to show us how we can do the same for ourselves. And that is attorney Scott Warwick. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you. I just appreciate the opportunity to spread this message to people. So thank you. Absolutely. So yeah, before we jump in, uh, share with us, you know, kind of your background. What's your story? How do we get to this point? Yeah, uh, a real quick snippet is I have been a human resource guy for 41 years. So a long time. Some a lot of your listeners weren't born yet. <laughs> okay, so long time. And in the late 80s and early 90s, everything was turning so legalistic. Okay, mm. now think about this. When I started the practice of law, sexual harassment was legal. Wow. Okay, there was yeah. no such thing as an I-9 form. There yeah. was no ADA. There was no F So everything was getting so legalistic that I went back to law school and I practiced. I've been practicing law. I've, I do have a law practice, uh, legal practice, very active legal practice for 27 years and yeah. an HR guy. And and all of that, plus childhood and everything was absolutely destroying my brain. And I had no idea. OK, yeah. because this is just how people act. They get upset. Then my son. In 2001, my oldest son was was diagnosed with uh, Asperger's syndrome, autism. Okay, mm -hmm. they called it at the time, and yeah. we were told. And I'll tell you, I mean, you know, being an attorney or whatever, we got the best board certified psychiatrists, four hundred dollars an hour, and everything they told us was wrong. Mm. It was wrong. They said, "Look, that that's just the way your kid is wired." So sad. Uh, if it was chemical, we could treat it better with medications. We'll try to still give him medications. And just to let you know that we found out later that the medications, these $400 an hour psychiatrists were putting my son on were wrong. Actually, they were toxic and causing him more harm. So I started doing my own research. And if there's one thing that I am good at, that I pride myself on, is I can find anything. I yeah. research. And I will not let go. So I, for the next three or four years, I researched everything that the neuroscientists were discovering about the brain. Mm -hmm. And what I found out was, oh, no, the cutting edge says you need to do this and this and this and this and this to let your brain do what it's wired to do. And that is to rewire itself. So I flew my son to Reston, Virginia, to the Amen Clinics. Some of your listeners, I'm sure, have heard of Dr. Daniel Amen on PBS and everything. Uh, and so we got my son's brain scanned in 2006, and it was a total mess, just a mess all the way around. And so we worked with the Amen Clinics as to vitamins, therapies, different types of exercise, drinking water, all this stuff, water, all this stuff. Took him back in 2008 for a follow-up scan, and his brain had rewired itself and improved about 15%. So it was visible. Okay. Now here's the kicker. At the same time, my wife said in 2008, well, while we're there, you're getting a scan. Mm. And I said, no, I don't need a scan. We're here for Michael. She goes, oh no, you're nuts. <laughs> you are nuts. You are. Now understand. And then we got my brain scanned and it was flaming post-traumatic yeah. stress disorder. I mean, bad. Okay. Well, most of us walk around quote, quote, nuts. And we think it's normal. Mm. And it's not. So across the next several years, now, my son, who who they said would probably never go to college, graduated with honors from The Ohio State University, then went on to Roosevelt University in Chicago, got his master's degree in psychology with a 3.91 grade point average. Okay, we got our brains rescanned. And in 2020, and understand, my son is the only person with autism mm -hmm. to have his or her brain scanned at the ages of 12, 14, and 20, or, or 26. 
and his brain is about 75% rewired. Now, don't misunderstand me. It's not a cure, but he can function with people. He can have friends. He can have relationships. He, he can function. My brain is about 80%, 85% cured. My obsessive compulsive disorder is completely cured. It is completely gone. The hot spots in my temporal lobes are completely gone. And so this is my big passion now is, and I love to talk to doctors about this stuff because traditional medicine will kill you. Mm. Okay. Because only, you know, what do we do for traditional medicine? We go and we give our symptom clusters to a psychiatrist, board certified psychiatrists. Yeah. And then they basically guess to see what prescription medication that you should be taking. And, and I don't know if anybody out there is on, you know, antidepressants, but every antidepressant says, uh, has a black box, block, uh, black box warning, which says, if you give this to the wrong patient, it could be disastrous, basically. It could kill you. Yeah. 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 So, so I do not begrudge anybody on medications. I Take them, wonderful, work with your doctors, but why would you not? change your lifestyle, do what you need to do to get your brain to heal itself. Yeah. And, and that's what we don't do. And, and so I don't like to talk about mental disorders. I like to talk about brain health. Yeah. So, you know, fix the organ. Yeah. And, and we're going to get into uh, just some simple things that people can potentially start doing um, to start rewiring and repairing. But I want to step back a little bit and just yeah. broadly speaking, cause I've always found this very strange, you know, we, as a, it seems like as a society, we, we talk about all of these other kinds of internal, um, you know, maladies, you know, we talk about IBS or erectile dysfunction mm. or, you know, Crohn's yeah. disease or heartburn or other, like we can, we're, we're totally fine talking about that. We know it, we can acknowledge mm. it, you know, and all of that. But then when it start when we start talking about, you know, mental health and, and things like that, people almost act like it's not real. You know, it's like, oh, you've got ADHD. Oh, you just, lack discipline you need to pay attention better oh you have right. depression oh you should just get a better attitude you know yeah. why is it and, and especially even in the legal industry and, and other white collar professions why are people so hesitant to acknowledge and talk about mental health you hit it right on the head the 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 and i, and I don't know how old you are but i don't know if you remember when cancer had a stigma yeah. oh, you, you don't you don't talk about cancer because you're dirty you don't mm -hmm. talk about this. You don't talk about uh, when people got TB, tuberculosis. Now that goes way back before I was even born. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and, and, oh no, just put him away here and don't talk about it. And until you understand what it is, then there's a phobia, there's a stigma. And mm -hmm. honest to God, in this world, we used to open up uh, institutions, mental institutions, and you would actually pay money to go and watch the crazy people. Mm -hmm. It'd be like a zoo. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, here's my whole thing. Uh, and I go to a lot of, and it's just, and I, I'll tell you, I lose patience with this more and more and more and more and more. We go to hear a quote, quote, mental health presentation. And I see these things on LinkedIn. Oh, went to this great mental health seminar. No, you didn't. Mm -hmm. No, you didn't. Because everyone I've ever been to, they talk about the mind and the body. Mm. Now, let me be very frank. Only an idiot would talk about that. <laughs> <Okay>? <laughs> the brain is the body. And, and I'll tell you, I've sent yeah. three dozen, almost four dozen people to go get brain scans, nuclear spec brain scans, which most people don't even know about. They think about an MRI. Well, an MRI will look for structural things in the brain, like tears, clots. A nuclear spec scan will scan your brain to watch you think. Mm. Very few people even know about this. So I'll tell you, uh, when I talk about brain disorders and brain damage, I am talking to 95% of everybody listening. Mm. Okay. And so if you keep thinking of the mind as being compared to the body, you will never get better and you will only get worse. 
if you don't do what I talk about in the book and in my presentations, I'm presenting this all over the country. I was at the National Safety Congress in San Diego last year. I'm going to be in, in San Antonio this year, several other places. And this stuff is news. When I talk to insurance companies to get my clients coverage for their insurance claim for the, these nuclear scans, yeah. it is amazing. Every single time I will have some insurance rep say, well, is this uh, physical or behavioral? And my answer is yes. Yeah. Right. It's the brain. And so what you're talking about is we think, hey, just, just buck it up. Just be tough like John Wayne. Well, Navy SEALs are tough. Our mm -hmm. soldiers are tough. And we have four times the number of soldiers coming back from the war who are killing themselves than got killed in battle. Yeah. Now think about that. It is safer to take your sons, my sons, husbands, mothers, and send them into battle than to bring them home and leave them alone with their gun. So yeah. here's the thing. I am very open. I will show you in 2008 how nuts I was. Just, I mean, I say, you don't want to mess with this person. You don't want anything to do with them. And then I show them 2020 and, and it's, it's 90, 85, 90% clear. Here's the thing. You got to start thinking of mental disorders as brain disorders, you got to start thinking of the physical organ of the brain. And yeah. there are only two organs in the body that will repair themselves. One is the liver and the other is the brain. But the way most of us live, you will destroy. If you live like a regular American, you will destroy eighty, at least 85,000 brain cells a day. Yeah. Every day. And that's why we lose our short-term memory. Because we treat yeah. our brains like soccer balls. And the neurons in your brain should last 120 years. So you hit it right on the head. We got to get yeah. rid of the stigma and we got to start treating the brain like we would treat the heart. Yeah. You know, think about it. Anybody's yeah. had a heart attack, they take their medicine, but they also exercise, they eat right, they do the things that are good for the heart. Right. Well, and I mean, you talk about, you know, the liver too, you know, people talk, you know, there's um, it, the liver repairs itself. Well, how do you do that? You change your diet, you know, you get some extra. So yeah, it's, it's the same, it's, it's the same kind of concept. When you talk about damaging your brain, like, you know, I think, you know, people hear the term brain damage and they think, oh, they must've had like some traumatic accident or yeah. played football too long or whatever the case yeah. is, yeah. you know, at what point, I think, you know, especially because this is what I'm curious about, you know, in your research, what have you found where it's like, okay, you know, a lot of things people can be born with, I'm guessing, My but son. then, yeah. So then how much of it then as just life maybe exacerbates that maybe increases that? And, and have you seen it to where, have you seen anything that suggests that maybe some people are not born with anything, but then due to whatever damage they put their brain through later in life, they then develop it. Like, for example, maybe mm. someone isn't born with like a chronic anxiety problem or depression problem, but then they somehow develop it later in life. Have you seen anything like that? Or how, how do people damage their brains more over time? That is really a million dollar question because what makes it really cool is the comparison of my son to myself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, my son was born that way. Yeah. Okay. That's just the way it is. Some people are born with this and, and I developed it. I mean, as far as I know, I think I was born perfectly normal, but, uh, when you, you know, when, when you're bullied, when you are picked on all yeah. these types of things that happen to you. Um, and, and here's the key. Most people damage their brains on a daily basis and here's how they do it. Okay. Uh, it's all cortisol and adrenaline. For the most part. Now, there's a lot of things that will damage your brain. If you're in an automobile accident or you hit your head, concussions will damage your brain. Absolutely. Alcohol, massive amounts of alcohol, no doubt about it. Smoking, no doubt about it. But here's what happens, okay? 20% of everything that is in your bloodstream will go to your brain. Now, really get this, because your brain and my brain make up maybe two or 3% of our body weight. That's mm -hmm. it. Okay. But 20% of everything we breathe in, of everything we inject, okay? Yeah. Everything that goes into our bloodstream goes to our brain. That's very disproportionate. 
The yeah. brain is so hardworking. When people say you need to get your sleep at night, your body only needs a couple hours. Your brain needs eight. Yeah. Okay. So, when, so picture Fred Flintstone and understand you and I are living with a brain that has not evolved in thousands of years. And I mean thousands of years. Okay, so let's go back to Fred Flintstone. When Fred Flintstone walked outside and there was a lion or a bear, Okay, he released massive amounts of adrenaline and cortisol, and that's when your gut tightens up mm -hmm. because your kidneys sit right on top of you, or your, your adrenal glands sit right on top of your kidneys. You're going to release this massive amounts of adrenaline and cortisol. Well, Fred would run it off, okay? Now, when you and I, when our car won't start, when we lose our phone, God help you, you'd rather lose a <laughs> kidney than a phone, right? Yeah. Um, you're going to release cortisol and adrenaline. OK, things like this. But here's the kicker. When your threat comes from another person, a mm -hmm. bully, you release three times the cortisol and adrenaline. Now, really get this. Stress is not stress is not stress is not stress. So when it comes from a bully, you're releasing three times that cortisol and adrenaline. And 20 percent of that is going to your brain. Your brain feels like soft tofu. Mm. Yo. You know, something like this, butter. And so when you mass all that gasoline in your brain, it will start to burn it immediately. And, and we've yeah. all felt brain damage. Like if yeah. you ever get flustered or frustrated, we've all felt it because we can't think. Well, that's yeah. because you're burning out your short-term memory. You are flooding your brain with massive amounts of adrenaline and cortisol three times as if you had a late assignment. And now... Uh, your short-term memory is starting to fry, okay? Yeah. So uh, most of us, me, I destroyed my brain with my thoughts and mm. it's fight or flight. And yeah. so I'll tell you, one of the programs, it's kind of funny, I'm, I'm heading over, I'm flying out to St. Louis to do a training of a bunch of shop floor employees on harassment and bullying, mm. Okay. 75% of all Americans feel like they're being bullied every day at work. The EEOC, yeah, the EEOC says 84% of all women in the workplace have been sexually harassed. Now think what that does to your gut. Yeah. Think what that does. That is destroying your brain. It's 40% worse than smoking. Everybody's yeah. like, oh, smokers. If you had somebody that lit up a cigarette in your workplace, everybody would say, oh, no, no, no. Like you just, you know, let off a nuclear bomb. Okay. Yeah, well, we let bullies walk around and do everything they want. So my message to my attendees and in the book and everything is, if you work with bullies, you've got to create a safe environment. I don't know if your readers can see my little underdog pin that says it's safe. Uh, I'll tell you, here's my message. If you have harassment and bullying in the workplace, okay, mm -hmm. if you are not tolerant, which is your diversity message, okay, yeah. guess what? you are going to go crazy because yeah. if you're a bully you are going to fry your brain if you are being bullied you're going to fry your brain and so either the environment has to change or my message is real clear find another job yeah it's yeah and i mean yeah and we talk about you know the majority of our audience is in legal and and you know, financial industry, but oh. legal, you know, specifically like you and I were talking off air, just the statistics around mental health in, in yeah. legal is, is astronomical. And so, it, yeah. you know, it really sounds like, you know, the, the legal profession is almost like a, a double-edged sword in that regard, because mm -hmm. on one hand, you know, just transactionally, you're probably dealing with high stress situations, but then you're also dealing with clients who are very high stress and, and, right. you know, on edge. If you're in litigation, you're dealing with opposing counsel and judges that, that could heighten all of that. And so it makes a lot of sense that the, the statistics yeah. for the legal industry are so high when they're dealing with that on a daily basis. Right, right. No, and you're absolutely right. And I'm going to pick on litigators in particular. And I just let you know, I've, I've tried several different cases and I, I don't know tax law. I don't mm -hmm. know divorce law. I will tell you right now. Um, I have a lot of clients that use another book that I've written. It's over 800 pages on employment law. Yeah. I know. I live it. I love yeah. it. I tell you, uh, I don't litigate anymore because I've caught, I mean, I've caught so many attorneys suborning perjury that it just makes, I caught the Ohio attorney general's office suborning perjury. 
And you know what I was told by the disciplinary council? Oh yeah, happens all the time. We treat each other like dirt. Yeah. And if I pay you enough money, if I'm paying you six, seven, eight hundred dollars an hour, I will tell you there's always a lawyer out there who will represent Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. Yeah, you got eight hundred dollars an hour. That's great. You're still gonna burn in hell, okay? So you're <laughs> yeah. still going to hell. But I will tell you, my in my brain, and I get this question. I actually did the Ohio Safety Congress. Uh, we had about nine thousand attendees. Uh, my session on brain health was live streamed. A lot of attorneys, a lot of attorneys, and I said, "Look, I've stopped litigating because every part of my brain is so much better, except my limbic system, which is depression." Mm. because I took a lot of pro bono cases because the more you help other people now let's talk positive for a minute you release you stress chemicals mm. okay like when I help other people or when I go to work there's a great study that just came out when you go to work and you work with great people positive people upbeat people you release these you stress chemicals like oxytocin that is the loving chemical serotonin that defeats depression endorphins kills pain it's a salve for your brain, okay? Yeah. So my advice to attorneys is, first of all, you need to develop a whole new lifestyle that at the end of the day, what are you going to do to get that cortisol and adrenaline that you build up throughout the day out? And laying on the couch, you're going to do it. Taking right. a nap, you're going to do it. You yeah. will always have stress. The only time there's no stressor, stressors on your body is when you're dead. So, yeah. you know, there's a little bit of brightness, okay? Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, something to look forward to. Uh, but I will tell you, get those eustress chemicals in there. And what do you have to do? You got to drink half your weight in ounces in water every day. Every day. You've got to go out and hang around good people. You got to exercise. Uh, pets are wonderful. Our dogs are so much smarter than we are. All they want to do is go for a walk. Yeah. And so, so my advice to attorneys is, first of all, stop being a jackass. Yeah. Stop it. Because if you are a bully, you will go crazy because you'll burn your brain. And I mean, in a very short period of time. But second, we now know. Now, really, listen up here. We now know that cortisol causes Alzheimer's. Mm. Now, if you want Alzheimer's, you just keep being you. Yeah. And I'll tell you right now, I know several litigators who have already gone over the edge. Already, they've had to take time off. And some of these guys and gals are on like a handful of uh, medications, psychiatric medications. And I've known several attorneys who killed themselves. Okay. So, yeah. so, you know, first of all, how are you treating opposing counsel? You know, I got a guy right now uh, that is, is making a claim against one of my clients. I've called and left two, two or three messages. Doesn't get back to me. Okay, well, that's fine. So what do I say? Up yours. Freeze right there. You will never meet anybody in your life who will tell you to go to hell faster than I will. <laughs> I, I'm like, oh, you're just, because you're not worth the cortisol and adrenaline. Yeah. I am not going back. I am not going back. So the practice of law is, is devastating to the human brain. And this is something every law student needs to study in law school. Yeah. Because I'll tell you, if you've been practicing law, if you've been a litigator for five years, you're brain damaged. So if you're not sleeping, you're brain damaged. That's the number one sign of a healthy brain that you sleep at night. If you have intestinal problems, I had a client had a million dollar case and she was under so much stress because she was sexually harassed, something terrible. Her mm. hair was falling out. Yeah. She had blood in her stool. Now think about this. The reason her hair is falling out is she is constantly flooding with adrenaline and cortisol. Her immune system is kicking in. You have an inflammation system and you have the T cells that kill you know, germs. Her inflammation system is fighting the cortisol and adrenaline and there's so much of it her whole body is starting to swell. Yeah. So her hair is falling out. Do you know what's going to be next for her? Rheumatoid arthritis, right. diabetes. Okay. So I told her, I said, you will never survive the next two years. Yeah. You likely might kill yourself. I suggest we take the quarter of a million dollars they're offering and you go have a good life. 
because yeah. you will not survive. Now, what's killing her? The personal attacks of her, you know, just on and on. We, we, I'll tell you, in this particular case, over in Indiana is where this all happened, was um, the president was having sex on the desk with his uh, employees, and then he's texting about it. I got the texts. I got them all. Okay, I got the email. Yeah. And so yeah. now he's doing this to her. He's texting her at home while she's at home with, on her hu- couch with her husband. And I told her, I said, you know, uh, this guy is brain damaged. There's no fixing him. You got to get out. And I'll tell you, she she took the $250,000. She is now the vice president of another agency uh, in Indianapolis and living great. Okay. The harasser, he's put on like 70 pounds miserable okay yeah. and and i'll tell you th- that's what we call karma so yeah. everybody everybody every lawyer every accountant needs to stop and think how are you going to take care of your brain you worry about your heart think about your brain yeah absolutely and so we've got everyone i think is seeing their future right in front of them right now yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's like keep doing what you're doing and and this is, you know, almost a guarantee of, of what might happen. So let's flip it. Let's end on a positive note. Yeah. What can people do? What are some simple things that people can do to kind of reverse this and, and get back to a healthy state? Absolutely. And that is the message. Yeah. And I don't care if you were born this way. I don't care if you developed it like I did. I don't care if you're on five or six psychotropic medications a day. Okay. What can you start doing right now? Okay. Right yeah. now. Half, and I'll tell you, I, I can't even hold them all. I got four of these. Okay. I yeah. fill them every day. And if you don't like to drink water, I go to Amazon. I don't have stock in Amazon, so there's no personal advantage for me here. But I tell you, I send away from my sweet drops flavors. I drink at least a hundred ounces a day. You go yeah. for a walk. OK, you start meditating because when you meditate and it's the other thing is you got to understand everything you do starts to rewire your brain. And what I want people to start doing is rewiring their frontal lobes so you get more control, just like the Navy SEALs do. Navy yeah. SEALs in training or in, in, in the program to become Navy SEALs, they now meditate, visualize. And you know what? They have built up the connections between their frontal lobes and their fight or flight response so much that they can resist the temptation uh, to panic when they're drowning. Mm. So pass rate has gone from 25% to 33%. Well, I don't know if anybody's ever studied what Navy SEALs do, but I can tell you right now, if it's good for a Navy SEAL, it's good enough for Scott, okay? Yeah. You gotta start getting your sleep. You gotta make sure that you are eating your, your vegetables, you eat right. Everybody in the world needs to start taking a multivitamin packet. If it's a multivitamin pill, flush them down the toilet. They're absolutely worthless. But Mm -hmm. there's all kinds of vitamins and minerals. Our food supply today is totally screwed up because of GMO farming. Okay, so 50 years ago or 100 years ago, you could get 70 bushels of beans or corn from an acre. Today, they get 200. Well, there's only so many vitamins and minerals in the ground, okay? So it's not absorbing all that stuff. So if you eat an orange, ate an orange in 1970, and you eat an orange today, you would have to eat eight oranges to get the same amount of vitamin A that you got in 1970. Wow. Okay, so multivitamin packets, and you got to go to places that are reputable like GNC. I go to the Amen clinics and get mine. Shackley, things that are... So these are things that we all start doing today. And I'll tell you, my clients in my in my seminars, everybody's got to get a legal pad. If you don't have a legal pad right there, ready to go, you're not thinking. Yeah. Okay, so go to the grocery, walk around the outside, high protein, low, low fat, which I mean low saturated fat. I want unsaturated fat. Okay, that's what I want because that's what runs your brain. Okay, mm-hmm. and low carb, but I do want carbs. So- high fiber breads, fish, chicken, fruits and vegetables. And these are things that in a very short, I got a client right now that was a buzzing mess in Mm -hmm. May last year. I mean, she couldn't even sit still. She was like a 
a poodle on cocaine. You know, she just couldn't even sit still. All right. Yeah. And I just had another meeting with her in December. She's calm. She's relaxing and focused. She's lost 17 pounds. And I said, you know, you are in so much control. She said, yeah, I feel so good. And I said, I don't even need a scan on you. I yeah. know what's happened in your brain. You're getting better blood flow. And I know those eustress chemicals are, it's like a salve and you're healing your brain and your brain will heal within months to a year. You'll start feeling better, but then yeah. you start wanting to get better and better and better. So these are all things put this way. Anything good for your heart is good for your brain. Yeah. 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 So yeah. this is my, this is my religion now. And so uh, it's kind of funny. I just did the safety Congress for Ohio had it live in my session. I had about a thousand people and I gave away about 20 copies of the book. Just gave them away, just gave them away because yeah. I want people to get this message. And actually I've got all kinds of free stuff. You don't have to buy the book. I got free stuff on my website just so people will learn and teach their children and start to, to, to stop this yeah. mental crisis and start focusing on brain health. Yeah. And it's, and it's, it's crazy. Cause it just, it's all simple stuff. Yeah. Like, you know, you can, and look, lawyers, you know, I know lawyers, they like to spend money on things like fine. If you feel like you can't leave your office to go for a walk, get one of those portable treadmills. You've got the budget for it. Get a sit stand desk, put the desk on stand mode, put the treadmill underneath it and just walk right. while you're doing some work. It's, yeah. you know, there, there are ways to do it and it's real simple stuff yeah. to make a big difference and extend your life. And, yeah. you know, especially at least in the short term, reduce the, the amount of time you feel miserable. Oh, why do you think people spend thousands of dollars on those great fish tanks in the office? Yeah. You know, right. I got an accounting firm and a couple of law firms where they have uh, an office cat. Yeah. You know, okay. I don't know if you've ever been to a, a, a retirement home, but you see these people just light up and you can, even some of them are monitored. You just feel their blood pressure go down when the cat sits with them. Yeah. Okay. I, you can't see it, but I have, I have three cats and a dog. You used to have two dogs and four cats, but I got two office cats. They're sitting right over there right now watching me and they look at uh, the window. So in case any marauders come to get me. Uh, anything that lowers your blood pressure, anything that releases bowling, anything that releases those eustress chemicals. And I'll tell you, I don't know, I lost my phone, but I got my Calm app and I always love this because lawyers, lawyers have money. Yeah. Lawyers have money. Let's be honest. Okay. So tell you what I did. I am not going to get Alzheimer's. Nobody listening right now. If you see my brain scans and I put my brain scans right out there on the web, you can see them how nuts I was. Nobody listening right now has more Alzheimer's cells in their brain than me. Nobody. i am got them. But that doesn't mean I'm going to be symptomatic. Mm -hmm. So I do all these things religiously. I cheat every so often. But I bought an, a hyperbaric oxygen tank. And I got a picture of it in the book. Uh, in my basement, it's a big white submarine. So three or four times a week, I crawl into that thing, take my laptop, get some work done, read a book, take a nap and breathe pure oxygen that replenishes your brain we haven't had yeah. clean air for 50 years okay? yeah exactly and and i got clients i sent for hyperbaric oxygen treatments so so there's all kinds of things from complicated to very simple but you got to start incorporating these things now the first thing go start drinking your water it flushes your brain yeah so and it should be yeah. hope Start the book that way. This is hope. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, we've given them, you know, we've given our listeners kind of a, a big outline, some big tips. How can people learn about you more, get a copy of your book and, and reach out? Um, well, first of all, if you come to one of my live sessions, I'll probably give you one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I only got like 200 of them in the garage. And I, actually, I ordered 400 and 200 of them are gone within just March. Um, yeah. I mean, really, this is my passion. If you just go to scottwarwick.com, and it's kind of funny, since I started doing this, I got introduced as, oh, yeah, Scott, he's that brain guy. So actually, I changed my logo, too. That's what I am now. I love that. If yeah. you just go to my website, scottwarwick.com, uh, S-C-O-T-T-W-A-R-R-I-C-K, uh, and go to free resources, 
I mean, I really take a lot of pride in that. Go to free resources and go yeah. down to stress in the brain or go down to the lunch and learns. Every month, if somebody wants to sign up for my lunch and learns, shoot me an email through my website. And every month I do like a 30 minute or maybe an hour lunch and learn on um, brain health, yeah. on tolerance, on diversity, on safety. I mean, think about it. The reason I'm doing all these safety conferences across the country is because of brain health. Yeah. Uh, and particularly for construction folks. And it's funny, all the OSHA attorneys out there listening. Oh, my God. OK, <laughs> uh, what's going on in the construction industry is is terrible. So I put this stuff out there for free. There's videos and then there's stuff on there as to how to get the book. If you just go to Amazon and search Scott Warwick, I've actually got three books out there. They, they all come up. Awesome. All, so but no, I want to get this message out. People we I'll tell you right now. Since 2018, we have doubled the number of mass shootings in this country. Sounds about right. Actually, actually, almost up to two a day. That means something is wrong with your brain. Yeah. Something's wrong. Normal people don't go to the mall and just start shooting. Yeah. So exactly. we got we got to do something, and we got to get to. I'm 62, and I figure if I take good care of myself, I can do this for another 20 years. And I, <laughs> you are going to have to wheel me in to shut me up, okay? Because <laughs> you, we've got to get something. Or I'll tell you, the Romans fell because some genius lined the aqueduct with lead. Mm. Okay, that's a bad idea. Today, we're doing it to each other. And it's that bully type of thing, the way you react when people disagree with you. And, and I'll tell you, if you know somebody who goes from zero to 60 with their temper all the time, is paranoid, uh, is hypersensitive over everything. Get them some help. Yeah, get them some absolutely. help. That's a damaged brain. A healthy brain is Betty White. Yeah, Betty White. And for yeah. older people, that would be George Burns. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. gotcha. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and I think, and even for people who may feel like they're already in a good place. Like it's, it's simple stuff like this, that, you know, the ongoing maintenance and, and the ongoing lifestyle that can make it even better and, and, and keep you in, in top shape. Yeah. And give your brain a chance. You actually grow a hundred thousand. Some people won't like this, but you have baby stem cells in your brain right now. Mm -hmm. And we know that you do grow a hundred thousand new ones every month and every one of those can grow 10 to 100 sprouts, connections. So you could grow, if you treat your brain right and do these things, you could grow a million connections a month. Yeah. But that didn't do you any good if you're burning out 85,000 a day. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, Scott, I mean, this has been a really great. I, I, I think that, um, you know, even though the solutions are simple, I think it's yeah. still a good wake up call for people. And, and I love, I, I, I enjoy just having people on and calling our audience out like that. I, you know, I, I think people need it and you know, it, it's, it's really good hey, to have that me out. communication. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off, but Hey, no, I you're thought good. Normal. my wife said you're freaking nuts. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so uh, good, good reminders as always, but that's going to wrap it up this week. Continue to rate and review everywhere you're consuming the show. And that's going to do it. Scott, thanks again so much for joining us. Oh, thanks for giving me the chance. I appreciate it. Thanks for listening. To learn more, go to spotlightbranding.com slash center stage.